Hi everyone. The lighting is a little bit freaky, I know. Um, it's not meant to look like this, although it's actually going to be quite effective for um, what I'm about to do, which is to read you a story. But the reason it's like this is that I've got the book open and uh, light on the book and it's reflecting the light back at me. Um, anyway, uh, we'll manage, I'm sure. So I was actually going to do this story or read this story to you um, on Halloween because it's a kind of a Halloween-y story. But I decided not to wait until Halloween because who knows what's going to be happening at Halloween. I might have something else to tell you about or I might not be in the mood to read you a story or, um, you know, whatever. So I thought, why not just strike while the iron is hot and read the story today? And that's what I'm doing. And the story is from one of my favourite books from when I was a child and that is A Book of Witches by Ruth Manning Sanders illustrated by Robin Jack. And look at that picture, isn't it amazing? I got this book out of the library as a kid multiple times. I just went back again and again and again and I got this book. I just loved it because I loved witches. Look, there's a little Maya. Um, so I just, you know, I loved it. It was just, just one of my favourite books. And she actually wrote, or, or at least compiled together and retold a whole series of folk tales from all over the world. And she gathered them together into different categories of books. So as well as a book of witches, she also um, published uh, a book of giants, a book of dwarfs, a book of dragons, a book of wizards, a book of mermaids, a book of ghosts and goblins. I'll try and get that one for Halloween. A book of princes and princesses, a book of devils and demons, a book of charms and changelings, a choice of magic, and a book of ogres and trolls. Um, and there are just lots of really interesting stories uh, in here. And the one that I'm going to read you, I think, comes from Germany. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Let's put my glasses on so I can see the damn thing. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that, but I think it comes from Germany. So I will read it to you, but just be aware there is, um, or was, earlier, I don't know if I can hear it now, there was a police helicopter flying overhead. It does that occasionally. It comes in circles. I'm trying not to be alarmed by it, but it does make you think of dark stormy nights, escaped serial killers and that kind of stuff. Anyway, hopefully that's not what it is. If you see somebody behind me, for God's sake, shout. So, now you see, I think I'm, I'm hearing noises now because I'm freaking myself out. Anyway, let's get on with the story, shall we? So, cheers everyone, cheers. A nip of brandy Ooh. for a cold autumn's night. Except it's not actually very cold. It's quite mild actually. But we will pretend that it is a crisp, cool autumn's night as we journey to the Black Stairs Mountain by Ruth Manning Sanders. Once upon a time, a poor widow and her granddaughter lived in a tiny house on the top of a hill. From the windows of this tiny house you could see down into a green valley and across the valley to a great mountain called the Black Stairs. Witches lived on the mountain. So every night before they went to bed, the widow and her granddaughter did four things. This is what they did. First, they loosed the band that worked the spinning wheel and laid it on the wheel seat. Second, they emptied the washing water into a channel that ran under the house door. Third, they covered the burning turf on the hearth with ashes. Fourth, they took the broom and pushed the handle of it through the bolt sockets of the house door, where the bolt itself had long ago rusted away. And having done all of that, they went to bed and slept soundly, knowing that the witches could not get in, because the doing of these things formed a spell to keep the witches out. But one day, the widow and her granddaughter went to market to sell the linen thread they had spun. It was a wild, wild day and a wilder night. Coming home, they took shelter from a storm of rain under some trees. And by the time the rain had eased off a bit, it was night. They missed their way in the dark and didn't get home until very late. When they did get home, they were so weary that their one thought was to get to bed and they forgot all about the doing of those four things that they should have done to keep the witches out. Well, they ate a sup and they drank a sup, and were making to go to their beds when there came four loud bangs on the house door. They were making for the door then 
to see who was knocking when a voice screamed out of the night and it was such an unholy scream that the widow and her granddaughter stood still in the middle of the kitchen and clutched each other in fear. Where are you washing water? screamed the voice and the washing water answered, I am here in the tub. Where are you spinning wheel band? screamed the voice and the wheel band answered, I am here fast round the wheel as if I was spinning. Broom, where are you? screamed the voice. And the broom answered, I am here with my handle in the dustpan. Turf coal, where are you? screamed the voice. And the burning turf answered, I am here blazing over the ashes. Then bang, 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 bang at the door again. And a score of hideous voices howled, Washing water, wheel band, broom and turf coal, let us in! The door flew open. In rushed a great company of witches, and in their midst, leaping and yelling, was old Nick himself, with his red horns and his green tail. Pandemonium! Witches all around them, whirling about the kitchen, whooping, bawling, yelling with laughter. The grandmother fell down in a faint, and there was a terrified granddaughter standing now in the midst of a throng of jeering, ill-favoured faces and skinny waving arms with her poor old grandmother lying like a dead thing at her feet. Old Nick, with the red horns and the green tail, had seated himself on a stool by the fire. He had his hands to his nose, and he was pulling that nose in and out as if it were a trombone and making the most hideous music with it. The witches began to dance to the music, kicking up their heels, leaping till their heads cracked against the ceiling, upsetting the chairs, the table, the pots and pans, the china and the crocks. Smash! went the widow's best china teapot. Smash! Smash! went cups and plates. Clitter clatter! Smash! Smash! Everything was tumbling off the dresser. The very dresser itself reeled and swayed and toppled sideways against the window, and the window panes fell out with a crash. Oh, what shall I do? What shall I do? thought the poor terrified granddaughter. Oh, if Granny should die, if this goes on till cockcrow, Granny will die. She will never live to see another day. I must do something, but what can I do? Then an idea came to her, and if a good fairy didn't put that idea into the girl's head, then who did? The music that old Nick was making with his nose became more and more hideous. The dance of the witches became more and more furious. Screaming with laughter, they leapt forth and back over the poor old grandmother, stretched on the floor in her faint. But they were taking no notice of the girl. So, holding her breath and a step at a time, the girl sidled her way toward the house door. The door was still open. The girl slipped through it and out into the night. What did she do then? She screamed with all of her might, rushed back into the kitchen and shouted at the top of her voice, Granny, Granny, come out! The Black Stairs Mountain and the sky above it is all on fire! Instantly, the music stopped and the dancing stopped. Old Nick made one leap through the window. The witches crowded after him, some through the door, some through the window. Out in the night rose a great and terrible cry, as with shrieks and lamentations the witches rose into the air and sped away through the darkness toward their home on the Blackstairs Mountain. The shrieks and lamentations dwindled away into the distance, but the granddaughter hadn't wasted one moment in listening to them. Directly the last witch was out of the house, she seized up the broom and clapped the handle of it through the sockets where the broom bolt ought to be. Then she dragged the tub of washing water across the kitchen and emptied the water into the channel under the house door. Then she loosed the band of the spinning wheel and laid it on the wheel seat. And last, she raked the ashes in the hearth over the burning turf till not one red ember could be seen. Having done all of that, she ran to her granny and brought her to her senses by dashing cold water in her face. The grandmother sat up. Is all quiet at last, she said. Yes, all is quiet, said the girl. But no, from out in the night came a distant, angry roaring, 
and the roaring grew nearer and nearer and louder and louder as the witches came whirling back from their home, furious at the trick the girl had played on them. The roar ended in sudden silence. Then, tap, 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 four quiet little knocks at the door. Washing water, let me in, came a wheedling, whispering voice. But the washing water answered, I can't. I am spilled into the channel under the door. I am trickling away around your feet, and my path is down to the valley. Spinning wheel band, you let me in, came the wheedling voice. But the wheel band answered, I can't. I am lying loose on the wheel seat. Broom, let me in, whispered the wheedling voice. I can't, answered the broom. I am put here to bolt the door. Turf coal, turf coal, open to me, open, urged the whispering, wheedling voice. And the hot turf answered, I can't, my head is smothered with ashes. Then came such a howling and cursing outside the door as made the widow and her granddaughter fall on their knees and cling together. But howl and curse as they might, the witches could not get in. They whirled away through the night at last, back to their home on the Blackstairs Mountain. The widow and her granddaughter had a job of it putting their house to rights. But you may be sure, after that night, never again did they go to their beds until they had loosed the spinning wheel band, emptied the washing water, piled ashes over the hot turf, and pushed the handle of the broom through the bolt sockets on the door. The end.